Hello, my age cuties. Forget Saturday night fever. We've got Saturday night trivia for you. Now, I told you yesterday about Orlando Bloom's blooming good engagement ring for Katy Perry. Well, looks like he's a creature of habit. Here's that ring once again. And here's the last ring he got for ex Miranda Kerr. Look familiar slash identical. Well, he likes to mark his territory, so now I'm sure he's in the doghouse. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your canine-friendly presenter at your phone's epicenter. And this is season two of HQ in full bloom. Let's check in on that prize right now, shall we? Wowzers! That is awesome. It now stands at $92,548, almost at the $100,000 mark. Now, remember, for every point earned by players this season, the prize will get bigger and bigger until the season finale at the end of this month. And who knows just how high it's going to go. You win points by answering questions correctly and sharing to social from the HQ app. Points help you reach levels. Leveling up gives you free passes. A free pass keeps you in the game even when you get a question wrong. The higher your level, the more free passes you have. Level 10 is the top of the top. It's where you want to try to go. If you hit level 10, that means you'd only have to answer a few questions correctly to win HQ for the rest of the season. And buckle up, because this season we're giving away even more cash than we did the last time around. Now tonight you're playing $5,000. That will cover Orlando's apology gift, I'm sure. And a whole lot of points to help you boost your status in the game and level up even faster. Now make sure you fire up your engines tomorrow for NASCAR trivia. Before the checkered flags wave at the Daytona 500, HQ Sports will be speeding to you live. Tap on the screen right now to get notified when the game is about to begin. Lauren Gambino will bring you 12 rounds of NASCAR trivia plus your shot to become an HQ Sports MVP, and it all starts tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow night, Wally and Buzz Lightyear coming out to play. Yay, we've got Pixar trivia coming at you, and you know it's gonna be truly incredible. We've got 10 Gs up for grabs on that one as well. That's tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. Do not miss it. Back to this game, live on this Saturday. Let's talk extra lives. They can keep you in the quiz. You can buy one right now if you see it on your screen. It's how you stay in the game if you get a question wrong. Play five days in a row and you score one for free. You can't use it on the final round though. Okay, time to get your honey out of the doghouse. Forgive and forget, they might come in useful, because we're about to get to the quizzing. Here we go with Q1. Which song was a hit single for the Beatles who let the dogs out, Gangnam Style, Hey Jude? The best to ever do it, the Beatles. Absolute legends. If you went for who let the dogs out, you are now released from the game. They're not that side dude, they made Hey Jude, of course, 276,000 of you did not let me down there. Some of you actually believe Lennon and McCartney were behind Gangnam Style and that galloping dance. You need to be reined in for that. Q2, according to theatre jargon, an actor waiting to go on stage is standing where? In the wings, on the tail, on the beak. Yes, yeah, where the nerves start to get to you. About to go out on stage. If you stand on the beak, you may lose your balance. It's way better to wait in the wings. In the wings is the correct answer here. There is no tail of the stage, and there certainly is not a beak. The wings of a theater are the areas that flank the stage. 254,000 of you knew that, and the showbiz term has made it to real life too. It means waiting to take someone's place or job. That's just cutthroat. Now, whether you like it hot or not, you want to be watching HQ this Monday to find out just how much Scott can handle. It's going to get spicy up in here. It really is. Spicy questions, spicy hot wings. We're turning the heat way up this Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern with a special guest as well, so don't miss it. Don't miss this. Q3, when was the economic policy Reaganomics practiced in the US? 1980s, 1920s, 1840s. Reaganomics, it's not a new exercise trend. 
When is it from? Well, you don't have to know a thing about economics to get this right. Just slap on omics to the president at the time. It was the 1980s. That's the decade that we were talking about. Reaganomics, aka Reagan's policies, 253,000 if you know your policies, don't you? Now, it had supporters and critics as well. Some saw them as a hit. Others say they completely failed. Q4, which of these is one of the railroads in Monopoly, Vermont, Reading, Pacific? Monopoly, the game that never ends even when you're begging it to. If you tap for months, you've gone off the rails here. A whole different game to the UK version I grew up on is Reading was one of the railroads. Yeah, it was. Vermont certainly wasn't, neither was Pacific, 220,000 of you choo-chooing to the next round. Railroads are great properties to own in Monopoly. Get your opponents to cough up that rent and hopefully go bankrupt in the process. That's my strategy. Q5, which sport does not have a position called power forward, ice hockey, football, basketball? Where is Lauren Gambino when you need her? Power forward, do you have the power? A whole lot of powerful players here, but one of these sports has moved forward without this power position. Home of the tight end, but no power forward. Football, we're talking. That was a touchdown for 211,000 of you. The power forwards in hockey and basketball are named that for good reason. These guys are massive. Q6. What does visa V literally translate to in English? Done and done. Face to face. Eye to eye. Parler français? Oh, oui, oui. The term has a couple of different meanings, but done and done is not one of them. If you ask for a vis-a-vis, -vis, you want a face-to-face. -face. That's what you're going to get. 111,000 of you facing off right there. That was that was a savage question. I'm going to go with savage here on Q6. I'm not going to sing that song because he's a way sweeter voice than I do. But 144,000 of you are gone. 111,000 of you are moving on. Vis-a-vis -vis also means in relation to a type of horse-drawn carriage and an episode of Star Trek Voyager. Could get confusing. Q7. What character from the Princess Bride has a supernumerary body part? Prince Humperdinck, Count Rugen, Dread Pirate Roberts. Well, you remember this movie. One of my faves. Three bad guys from the Princess Bride, but which one has the extra body part, the more digits, the merrier? It's Count Rugen. And you counted six there, 80,000 of you did. That was a brutal question. Two toughies back to back. Count Rugen was the nefarious six-fingered man. He needed special gloves, but at least he'll never give you the middle finger. Because it's physically impossible. Q8. What form of electric power did Nikola Tesla pioneer? Rheostatic current, alternating current, direct current. Nikola Tesla. It's a fun name to say. The war of currents was actually a real thing. The biggest beef ever to science nerds. Thomas Edison and his direct current faced off against Tesla and his alternating current. Who's got the AC on full blast? 62,000 if you do. Tesla's inventions are the foundation of modern power, but the poor guy was destitute when he died. Sad story. Q9, which talk show host has a famous diastema? David Letterman, Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien. If you know what a diastema is, you know the answer. Which of these three funny men? Well, his diastema isn't quite as distinctive as Michael Strahan's, but is famous nonetheless. The big man himself is David Letterman. And you are talking a good game there. 32,000 of you are. We lost half of you. Brutal again. All three hosts have made light of their physical abnormalities from Coco and his pasty skin to Jay's mammoth chin. What good sports they are. Q10. Which nation has a capital city with all five vowels in its English language name? Dominican Republic, Barbados, Haiti, A-E-I-O-U. I sometimes cry. I miss Barbados. It's my favorite destination, but Bridgetown is missing some vowels here. Playing a full hand, Port-au-Prince in Haiti contains all the vowels. 19,000 if you knew that. You nailed it. Dominican Republic Santo Domingo is missing an E. And a U. That means you and I need to take a trip to hit those beaches. 
What do you say? Let's do it. Now remember, please, keep your phones closed. Words is coming up next right after trivia, so don't go anywhere. It's Q11. In the original Oz books, which character once had a completely different name? Cowardly Lion, Tin Man, Scarecrow. Which one of our fave characters? We love all of these guys. He was once known as Nick Chopper before he cursed Axe, chopped his limbs off, ouch. Luckily they were replaced with Tin. It's the Tin Man and you have a heart. Yes, you do, 9,252 if you do. The Tin Man's backstory was revealed in the second Oz book. All is about to be revealed now because we're off to see the quiz of the wonderful quiz of Oz. We are heading into the final round with 9,252 players left in the game. Another 4,000 almost using extra lives to get back in. And we've got $5,000 in the bag. Good luck, players. It's Q12. Which of these is not in the Museum of Modern Arts Department of Architecture and Design? Slinky, Etch-A-Sketch, Pac-Man. Grew up on all three, but who didn't make the cut? The MoMA isn't all boring paintings, there's some cool fun stuff in there too, like a video game exhibit. But did Pac-Man make the stage? We spent our childhoods creating art on the Etch-A-Sketch, but the museum does not consider this art itself. Etch-A-Sketch is your winning answer tonight. We've got 2,935 winners, you smashed it! <laughs> Well done to our 2,935 winners tonight. You totally slayed. We've got Wilbert right there taking on $1.70. And Brian's taking $1.70. And Alex Cross as well. Le Crabby, nothing to be crabby about tonight, that's for sure. Akron Rass as well. Lots of, lots of little doggies. Uh, here tonight. Well done to all of you and do not forget Words is up next so don't go anywhere. Keep your phones at the ready for that. Anna Roisman is going to be there with lots of words in store for you but well done to all of you for all the points that you earned tonight. They're going to help you win big cash. Well done. A blooming good game. You certainly left your mark on it like Orlando. I'm Sharon Carpenter. Here's where you can find me on the socials so don't be shy. Stop by and say hi. Now we're back tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern with Pixar trivia and $10,000. So join us then. In the meantime, have an epic Saturday night. See you soon.